I dream our ancestors' dreams. Our Black history don't start with slavery, but from the souls that's deeply rooted in Africa, amongst us, and within us. Our ancestors live. Their spirits surrounding us and guiding us to an Africa of our dreams. We shall find the root of our spiritual fruits as kings and queens, honoring our heritage and our God deep within Africa. Their dreams live within us like an unconquered soul, keeping the hold. It just won't let us go. Yet, we are unafraid to walk in our ancestors' dreams. Their dreams of healing and prosperity. To live our lives in peace and harmony with dignity and humanity. Believing in their hearts, we shall overcome someday. With these dreams, it comes with a price. So we shall continue the fight for all the lost lives, rising up to majestic heights, marching ahead, no turning back, no more wallowing in the shadow of despair. See, we learn to love the falls in our hair, unapologetic for our hips and our thighs, or our African descendants sun kissed the skin. Our ancestors' dreams is within our family bloodline, weaving into the fiber of our being. It's in our hustle, it's in our flow. We feel our ancestors touch with each victory and triumph. Unshackled chains going against the grain, no longer being afraid. Answering God's call. No more deferred dreams. No more stolen dreams. No more taking our dreams to the grave. It's like the alchemist tracing the long desired dream. Searching for his treasure of gold. Others may not know. Our ancestors' dreams is in you. It's in me. As we carry out the teachings of our forefathers' history, their dreams is the reason why we even exist. We will pass on the torch honoring their legacy. Our ancestors lived. Their dream lives within us are the treasures of our culture. It's in our speech. It's in our song. It's in our dance. We are our ancestors' dreams. It's in our hands. I dream our ancestors' dreams. Thank you. Fantastic. That was fantastic. So there was so much in there. So I'm gonna try to grab a couple things. <laughs> I'll, I'll go with the theme of the, the last one, which was, we are our ancestors' dreams. That just resonates with me. We are, and we are. The decision is, are you gonna live the dream or create a nightmare? That's the path you pick. No one can decide that but you, no one. So 
I'm gonna bring on our next poet. I'll be doing a poem in a few minutes. And this young lady and I had the pleasure of uh, featuring at Spirits and Lyrics at the same time for my birthday. And we had such a great time. Boy, I miss Spirits and Lyrics at Jirani's. And it is, it's an atmosphere, it's a love, it's, they call it the comfort zone for a reason because they make love the theme and you feel it as soon as you walk through the door. If Jirani isn't loving enough, which it is, you add Jirani's love and Jeff Johnson's vision and you have love overflowing. It's just, you know, COVID is one of the things that, you know, COVID took from us, hopefully only temporarily. But um, so that I believe that's where I met this fantastic poet and she's gonna tell you more about herself. When I say she's dripping in authenticity, she's dripping and yes, she's beautiful on the outside, but oh, the inside is, the inside, the outside is only that beautiful because the inside is so gorgeous. She is just a phenomenal poet. Afia, come show them what you're working with, girl. Come, come on now. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and blessings, everybody. Thank you so much, Kim. Um, yeah, we did meet I, at SNL like a couple of years ago now. And um, Kim actually featured in my um, African Cultural Arts Showcase as a model for a fashion show, uh, The Drummer's Beat. So we've been doing the collaboration <laughs> for some time and it's it's been an honor and a pleasure um, being able to work with someone that I, I get to, I look up to. So um, yeah, my name is Afia Chin. I am a first generation American, born in Brooklyn, bred in the DMV. Um, and my mom is Ghanaian and my father is Trinidadian and Chinese. So I think of myself as a child of the world. Um, but, you know, as a melanated woman um, with those historical backgrounds associated with who I am, um, there is so much uh, history and lessons that I've been able to appreciate as I've gotten older. I actually just celebrated my birthday three days ago. Um, so it's just, it's a bit of blessing to, to come into this year with so much new, so much more insight. And these two pieces that I'm going to share with you all today are, um, based in my, in my new understanding and my learning and all of those things. So I hope you enjoy them. Um, this piece is called Blossoming from Brick. This was featured for the city of Alexandria's um, Harvesting a Legacy with Poet Laureate uh, Kaniki Jakarta in Alexandria, also a first. Um, so I hope you all enjoy. <clears throat> Before white fingertips plucked me from my foundation, the bedrock of bliss took the form of bread baskets and bowls heavy with soup awaiting its counterpart to seal wholeness into my heart that used to pound in unison with the mortar and wooden pestle that turned cassava, plantain, and grains of the holy ground into what cemented our tables. The whole now filled with Anansi's fables, woven into the core of conversations to come in whispers. No longer from full bellies and tingling lips wide open with laughter, but clasped together in memory and prayer over the sound of whips and aquaba, welcome them into my home. Their lords brought false salvation. They tore down brick and forced trowels into palms to shape nations. Once built on kneading and purity poured from calabashes was broken by bloodstained wrought iron chains and screams from lashes laced with hatred and demonic disdain. They took the sound of laughter from my lungs. The same way the sea pulled the rungs of my freedom in its sails, liberation in the breeze of north winds whisked past my cheeks as wisdom knit itself into the veins guiding me to a more bountiful harvest in the union. After the arduous journey, we quietly dined on communion, honoring the legacies lost in the mixture of salt and insu. The hands of my people, once covered in white, caressing and molding the land where we now stand, washed clean again, virtuously spreading nourishment to the soul. That's that piece. Woo! <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, so a lot of the symbolism from that piece is actually based on an art installation by a um, 
uh, African um, uh, sculptor. And uh, there was this beautiful um, structure that was in the, in the city of Alexandria on uh, Prince Street. And I think you can look it up online still. And there are these huge statues and they're absolutely beautiful. They're all facing the water and each symbol represented something different. So I tried to incorporate each of those things into that piece. Um, but yeah, so let me get into this next piece. Thank you all so much for your love. I see the comments like popping up. So I'm, I'm truly, truly grateful. Um, this next piece I've written recently, it's very new. Um, as a millennial, we are understanding what generational trauma truly is. I'm currently studying heredity and um, the effects of post-traumatic stress and how it affects multiple generations over time. And, um, you know, and I am currently in therapy and I advocate for therapy. I advocate for healing from trauma in every sense of the word. It doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are, male, female, it does not matter. We all have healing that needs to happen, especially in this community. And I, I'm truly grateful for my friends who've encouraged me to go to therapy to get the healing that I need. Um, but this piece is, uh, is still a little sensitive. So, um, here we go. It's called Legacy. I've sat in the presence of generations of brokenness, witnessed shattered consciousness and bludgeoned awareness of self and feminine divinity. I've sipped on sweet nectar from the forbidden fruit that would have had blaspheme drip from the lips of descendants enraging their spirits. I've swallowed pride with despair in the front of the eyes of enemies and creators. I've digested manifested pain in hopes of gaining peace within my soul to heal the wounds of the womb. The tombs of my predecessors are filled with dust and riddled with cold despair with no hopes of repair. Never again to be filled with love and warmth. I've bit my tongue, sorry, I've bitten my tongue until it bled the same blood that flows through their veins and drank it in hopes that the poison would cure the poison that's been sustained for centuries. I've sworn on all that is holy that this could not be the cycle of my future legacies. The past, sadly, now lost in translation, never to have thirst quenched from the sweet nectar of the forbidden fruit of knowing better. Thank you so much, Kim. <laughs> Seldom am I speechless, Brooklyn, but you got me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you knew how my spirit just elevated hearing you say that right now. I'm so honored. Um, the healing journey is an infinite journey. It never stops. Yes. So um, continue to heal yourselves and those around you will truly benefit. Um, Thank you so much for this opportunity. It's been an Thank honor. Thank you. Thank you for accepting. Ooh, the generations of brokenness. <sighs> and I just went, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Woo. And I told y'all, Prince William, I'm telling, I just, I'm explaining to y'all before this started, okay? This is the fire that's in the room today, okay? So, ooh, okay, I got to do a poem now. <laughs> we'll do one now and one later. So this one is called African American. I'm a African American. I'm a misunderstood black woman. I don't have to wear a dashiki to be authentic and straight hair don't make me fraudulent. I'm an exit to hate. I'm a destination called distraction. I am Serena Williams. The assessment of my behind is astonishing. Even if I'm carrying a racket and award, my behind is center stage. Well, you do have to be behind me to notice. So you go ahead and tweet because I don't look behind me while I'm rewriting history. My name 
Michelle Obama. I'm the most educated first lady ever. I went to Princeton and Harvard, but they only talked about the fact that I added a little bang to my hair, like my knowledge stops on top of my scalp. Then they talked about the fact that I wore sleeveless dresses until they saw Jackie O did the same. And then the conversation had to change. They called me a lot of names back then, but get this one right. The former first lady of the United States of America. My name, Dorothy Mary Catherine. Crickets, I know you don't know me. Oh, come on, we're hidden figures, remember? Remember that feel good movie they made? <laughs> yeah, who knew NASA stood for naturally abolishing sisters' achievements? Look, you can miss me with that lie. Why don't you call it lies, lies we told, buried truth. Oops, it's too late to reveal now. That's okay. The truth is out now. Is it? My name, Miss Montague. What? <laughs> you thought NASA was the only one with a hidden figure? When I was a little girl, I went into the submarine with my dad and I saw all those buttons and I asked the man sitting there, I said, what do these buttons do? He looked at me and he said, you'll never need to know. Well, he was right. I redesigned the whole fleet. I computerized it. I didn't need to know. You're correct. So when I used to all walk into a room, they say, can you get me coffee? Oh, you got me mistaken. I'm in charge, but you can go get me some. <laughs> My name, Claudette Colvin. A lot of you don't know me. <laughs> That's because Rosa didn't park that lie. You see, I was the first person that sat on that bus, but they didn't give me the credit that was due me. I'm not saying I should have been a representative for the NAACP. I'm just saying first is first and second is second. But hey, who, who's checking, right? We all park some lies sometime. My name, Oprah Winfrey. Yeah, early on they told me I needed to change my name. I told them they need to open their vocabulary. If I had listened to haters, I wouldn't own, own now. <laughs> my name, Nichelle Nichols. You may know me better as Lieutenant Uhura from the Starship Enterprise. What you don't know is I almost quit that show. This Trekkie talked me into staying. <laughs> that Trekkie, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I really didn't even know Martin even watched the show. I said, Martin, <laughs> really, why do I need to stay on this show? He said, because you are Lieutenant Uhura and not Uhura from House Clean. So I stayed and boldly went where no black woman had gone before. I'm any black actor. I can win an award for slavery, but not for bravery. Don't believe me? Ask Denzel. He got nothing for playing Malcolm X. We got rewarded and he was selling X. That was our training day, but we missed the lesson. Look, I didn't play this race card. I just showed you part of my hand. <sighs> yes, thank y'all, thank y'all, thank y'all. So let's keep this beautiful flow going. We're bringing in the gentleman, the king in the room. Yes, honored to have this gentleman here. I, I don't know where we first, well, first of all, we never met in person that I recall. Uh, we've met in, I call it the internet streets. <laughs> and uh, he is a phenomenal per poet, but even more so a phenomenal person. He's one of those people who make you feel comfortable after talking to him for five minutes. He's one of those genuine people you meet and you know he says what he says when he's saying what he said, meaning he meant what he said. You don't have to worry that he's coming from another angle. He said what he meant. And I like people like that. You know, Brooklyn, Brooklyn like people like that. Anyway, I'd like to introduce Brian. Wow, that was... Uh... That was very wonderful. For a moment, I was like, I wonder who she's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, my name is Brian. I, I really don't like to talk too much about myself because, you know, all of our accomplishments, uh, you know, come from the creator anyway. Uh, and I, I really believe in, in um, 
as humble as possible. Um, so um, forgive me, I, I won't talk too much about myself. I'm gonna just go right into the piece. Uh, there are two pieces I'd like to share. Uh, one is uh, Sweet Tone, Somber Tones. Um, I say it a lot, uh, or I perform it a lot because it just makes me feel good. It's about a 30 year old piece. And then I'll proceed into a piece called Recollections of the South. So I'll, I'll get right into it. Sweet Tones, Somber Tones. Sweet tones, somber tones, sky. Me all alone with this here old horn as my only ally. But I'm feeling good, feeling jazzy, playing up the storm. People hearing my sound, now they're coming in to get warm. Head swaying slowly, sort of side to side. Finger snapping, and I'm filled with pride because I'm entertaining my people in the chocolate city. I got my eye on that dark skinned girl looking pretty, fever running, running wild. And this old woman say, Go ahead, play it, child. Ain't no worry, just dancing and fun. See, weren't nothing like this when the night begun. Yeah. These my peoples jam packing the place. You see, I'm proud of my culture and I'm proud of my race and I'm giving them back something for what they gave me. And I'm loving every minute playing this old horn real jazzy. Short hair, cornrows, scarves and braids going out into the cold night as all the fun fades, sweet tones somber tones in the night sky be all alone with this here old horn as my only ally in peace thank you uh the next piece is uh recollections of the south she was to me a single drop of cool water brushed along the dry cracked lips of a tired laborer she became to me a heavy rain, densely veiled in mist. There was no vision in her storm. She inspired me with her loveliness in dawns and twilights of violet, where birds tweet and crows caw. She ignited within me the anger of raging rivers, leaving broken trees ripped and uprooted by her chaos wayside. Yes, I recall, this is how I loved her. She was to me a single seed planet in famine, deep within the rich black soil of the Delta. She preached a ministry of kindness and cruelty and brought to me the sustenance of honey and the sourness of vinegar. She held summer captive in the blush of her lips, her kiss, so I could never see in a season or time. And this love, born in the death of a rebel's cry, upon black backs cracked in fields branded and bonded with iron no longer has grasped it seems on souls that are thirsty longing for peace and serenity but she leaves behind only faith and tears to quench windpipes covered in thorns and ashes are still faintly smoldering making her promises hard to trust yet still she lives in my core so i yield to her beauty yes this is how i care she became to me a foregone forever, lost in the handshakes and the nods from strangers in small towns. She became to me lifetimes lost with the loyalty and betrayal of the stars and bars of Dixie. Come, sit a spell. She will lull you to sleep and seduce you. She will become one with you. Yes, I recall, this is how I loved her. In peace. And by her, I meant the South. Got it. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now, he here is being very modest here. He is on lots of awards and stuff. His poetry is well recognized. 
I, I won't put him on the spot because, you know, I know sometimes I don't like to talk about myself either, but understand that he's being super modest here. <laughs> I, I will add a little something only okay. because only because it's a it's a credit to the creator, you know. Yes, I, I have stepped away from writing. I had some success when I was younger Then I stepped away because uh, the most important thing to me was always been my family. So and will always be so I, you know, I had to make sacrifice my art for that. But now they're at a point where I can I can actually, you know, do a little bit, bit of art. Um, but within the first year, uh, I went from this little room to the head of the United Nations. I won an award from the United Nations. Uh, and that was all due to create to the creator. So someone just stepping off from not writing like a prodigal son, uh, 20 years later, just come and just start to enter a little contest and you win. That's nothing but the creator. So I'll only mention that just to give credit where it's due. Thank I you. appreciate you so much. Thank you so much, Brian. That was amazing as I knew it would be. And I'm glad you explained the South part because I'm like, you know, we poets write, I'm sure some of us got it, but for those who, you know, didn't, that's what it was about. That was awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome, my pleasure. Yes, I told you, Prince William County, those y'all, don't be sleeping on us, okay? Don't be sleeping on Prince William County. <laughs> uh, but for those of you, don't come for me. I'm not saying that other areas aren't great. Uh, this is not a contest. It's not one all. It's not like that. I'm just saying we are also great. That's all I'm saying. Saul, don't come for a sister. Thank you. Okay, so get a haiku in here. Haiku. And I went over earlier what haikus were, so. You should put blacks on money. You hashtag us more than dead presidents. <laughs> One more time, haiku. You should put blacks on money. You hashtag us more than dead presidents. And I mean that strictly as a joke. I don't want us to be on money. Anyway, <laughs> moving right along. So the next artist I'm bringing, I've only heard once. And when I tell you, for those of you, some of you in the room know me. And, you know, there's a lot of Brooklyn folks in here. And for those of you who are Brooklyn folks know that we're not easily impressed. And I heard her do a poem and I was like, you know, you're supposed to be facing the camera. I'm like, who is that? Ooh, that's a ball of fire. That's who that is. I was like, I hope she can, I hope she can come. And she said, yes, I am so happy. She's a young lady, I believe a teenager, I'm not sure. I hate putting people's ages out because, you know, people are like, well, because my daughter has a baby face and she's not a teenager. Her age is irrelevant. Her poetry is powerful. And that's why she's here. Um, I'm not going to even hold up your time. I'm just going to bring this ball of fire right in then and let y'all enjoy, enjoy, and enjoy. Some of you may say, well, I've never heard of her. Well, get your pen and paper down because you're going to get the need to know her name. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. That I <laughs> thank you. Um okay, so my two poems. Give me one second, sorry. Okay. Right. Sometimes I worry too much about the future. It's how I operate because I cannot tolerate the thought of not speeding. I try hard to find life's meaning. What is the essence of my being? There must be more to life than just breathing. Work hard, work harder, sleep, and then repeat it. I think about who I'll be often, but I think too much. That's my problem. I'm consumed by the thoughts of what I am and what I'm not. I judge myself too hard, forgetting everyone's just as flawed. I look in the mirror and I speak negative words, forgetting words have power to heal or to hurt. I convince myself that I'm not enough. I feel disgusted or ashamed at what I see and I cry into my eyes puff. Those days are the worst when things get very rough, but then I look in the mirror once more and I see my potential. I'm reminded of my worth and I know I can be more than enough. So I wipe my tears and I tell myself, I am tough. That's why I love the way I do. That's why I talk the way I do. That's why I walk the way I do. That's why I am the way that I am. 
I'm planning for my future because I have the potential to be more than enough. I have the potential to be extraordinary love. I have the potential to be great. I am a hard worker. That's one of my greatest traits. I find my strengths that way, my weaknesses, and I'm happy that way because in all seriousness, I'm, de I'm designing myself to be the best version of me, training myself to love myself, to love what I see when I look in the mirror. I know who I am and who I could be. I love like it's the last thing I do because what if it's the last thing I do? I laugh like it's the end of the world because what if it's the end of the world? I cry like it's my last day here because what if it's my last day here? So yes, work hard and definitely plan ahead, but don't be so far minded that you miss today instead. Don't be so focused on what you wanna be, focus on who you are. See, I realized that I was a fool. All I cared about was my future, working hard, succeeding, doing well in school. Not saying that's a bad thing, learning is pretty cool, but enjoy your youth because sometimes life is cruel. Life is so short, you blink and it's gone. It's not a race nor a game. Please don't think succeeding means that you won. Life is about experience. That's why we only live once. We only get one, one experience, one chance to live life to the fullest. And success is a part of that experience, yes. But if you die today and all you've known is success, know that heaven doesn't accept success as a guaranteed achievement. It doesn't accept success as a guaranteed acceptance rate. Everything you possess remains here. You cannot take those things there. So live your life like it's your last day here. Be in good spirits. Have faith. Have no fear of what the future holds. My future isn't going anywhere. Tomorrow will always be there. Today will never happen again. It'll be gone in 24. 24 hours of today spent living for tomorrow? I don't think so. I live for today and I'm content. That is the meaning of life. Live into your, in your today because tomorrow is forever away. The future of tomorrow depends on how you lived in the presence of today. Love who you are now so love can lead the way. Feel upset, feel angry, feel sad, feel mad, but don't let those feelings stay. We spend so much time feeling sorry for ourselves, beating up ourselves, trying so hard to be anyone but ourselves. It's draining. Live well, be who you are today so the future you won't regret today. That is the meaning of life. He who has lived well has achieved true success. Live well today, tomorrow's forever away. The future of tomorrow depends on how you live today. So that was my first poem. Sorry. Thank you all, thank you all so much. And this next one is because of um, Black History Month. So uh, this is actually the poem Miss Kim heard me say we actually did a um, poem about two was it one week two weeks ago um, for the Asala event um, Black History Month event so that's the poem that she heard me and I thought it would be good good to share the same poem so here it is it's called Who Am I Who Am I Am I the chains that grip my forefather's skin or am I the cage they trap my foremothers in Am I the stake they were whipped and beat on in the street? Or am I the plier that was used to pull out their teeth? Am I the ash that fell from their flesh when they burned? Or am I the cries that escaped their lips when they boiled? Am I the descendant of a man and a woman who went through these things? Or am I the child who has lost my identity, my roots, because of these things? I said, who am I? Am I the tree or the noose they hung my family from? Or am I the arm and the leg they had mutilated numb? Am I the salt that was poured on all of their wounds? Or am I the growing baby killed in a mother's womb? Am I the auctioner who sold and separated families? Or am I the alligator to whom they fed tiny black babies? Am I the ship that some chose to jump off of because they thought death was far better than being slaved off? Am I the descendant of a man and a woman who went through these things? Or am I a child who has lost my identity and my roots because of these things? I said, who am I? I asked myself this question because I know it's time to rediscover my roots, learn where I come from, unlearn the lies and uncover all of the truths. I am the black child my ancestors wish to have been. Though racism is still here, I live the life they wish they'd lived. I am the best dream those before me dreamed. I am the, hold on, the hope they held on to when they prayed to be redeemed. I am the child they prayed would not endure all of the pain and the torture that slavery ensured. I am the child of the child of the child of a slave. And I embrace the beautiful skin that they were taught to hate. 
and I take pride in knowing I share their best physical trait. I know my melanin is a constant reminder of the ones that were enslaved. I am the child of my ancestors, the ones that were so brave. See, today I remember who I am. I am a member of the Black family. Yes, yes, I am. The blood of the ones before me runs through my veins. I am no longer shackled, at least not by physical chains. I honor their history, the ones they were forced to write. And I tell their story because textbooks won't tell it right. I live after they died and they died and now I live, but I carry on to represent them because that is what family is. I am a part of the Black family. I have discovered my identity. I am a part of the Black family. That is who I am. Thank you. All righty, I did warn you. I did warn you. Okay. Woo, it's just, I, I, <laughs> I enjoyed that. I mean, you know, I think you're phenomenal. So thank you. and thank you everyone. I'm seeing the comments now. Thank your you. pen ain't no joke. Zion, everyone. Thank you. Okay, so I am going to do a poem, and this one is called <laughs> Not Magic. <laughs> I hate the term Black girl magic. Now, before you roll your eyes, try to see through mine. Magic is a trick, a show. It's not permanent. So when the show is over, so is the magic. I don't want sisters to perform anymore. While others are pulling a rabbit out of their hat, we're pulling out degrees and we're still overlooked. We have busted our behind in every category, education, employment, personal development, broken stereotypes and watch you try to build them back, ran on track and for office, and the only thing you could come up with is magic? This ain't magic. For so many sisters, it's depression using Maybelline for cover. Depression has straightened more hair than grease, yet we persist. Not all charcoal burns the same. Black burns ain't recognized. Saying we are magic strips us of our accomplishments. Speaking of magic, how do you keep making us disappear? So many of us are missing. Is that the magic you speak of? Black girls have never been magical. We work twice as hard for less. You see, Black girls are self-taught, but we don't go to no magic school. Our DNA is not made of sparkles. If you see some glitter residue, no, that's just us shedding skin to make way for more greatness. Black girls ain't magic. We are ancestral sunshine and Black rain. We brighten up your day <laughs> while watering your soul. Don't let all this light fool you. We dive deep into darkness to show this light. Our pain is not allowed, so we hide it well. Is that the magic you speak of? The ability to look happy while struggling? We are not magical. We are strength personified, encapsulated with perseverance. We just wanna be our own definition of whole. You see, I've seen too many sisters working to elevate themselves, so I cannot let you reword our efforts to make it effortless. Keep your salt. We only want seasoning. You can't throw shade on black women. We used to sitting in it. You wanna honor us? Say you've never seen someone so determined to get ready for a party they weren't expected to attend. Then show up and be one of the most majestic people in the room, all while judging she too much and hate her in a back pocket. Say Black women be warriors for tripling our preparation for a single job. Say we paint brushes that don't need to be dipped into paint to show color. Magic don't make masterpieces. We do. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, masterpiece, yes. That one gets me a little heated up as you saw. So let me do a little explaining because I normally don't explain after a poem. Do I absolutely despise the term? No. What I want us to get away from 
is taking accomplishments from people and putting cliches attached to them because it, it takes away from the effort to which people accomplish things. Black girls are magic. So they really didn't do anything. They were just magic. And then what happens when the black girl isn't magic, the black girl who doesn't feel magical, next, am I not magic? Why didn't I get the magic? What's wrong with me? So it's not magic, little sister. It's not magic, little queen. It's not magic, teenage queen. It's not magic, 60, 70, 90 year old queen. Y'all have worked hard. We standing on our, the shoulders of our ancestors. We are standing on greatness. We've come from greatness. We, we've done great things because of the foundation that they built. So am I saying you don't use the term black girl magic? No, but I'm saying let's replace that with black girl excellence, black girl accomplishment, black girl got it done. That's the difference. It's a different tone. It's a different perspective. It's a different atmosphere, so. Okay, off my preacher sound box. <laughs> I am bringing in the next poet. And she is a spiritual wonder, healing hands, healing soul will uplift you. I, I tell you, um, I think her words fly. I've never been able to catch it, but I, I really do think that her words have that energy that just sinks right in. So I'm, I'm not going to hold y'all up from this greatness. Let me move out the way and invite Dawn into the room. Don't forget to unmute now. <laughs> oh, like what? Me? <laughs> <laughs> Who that? That's Good you, afternoon, beautiful. Everyone. All you, all you, all oh, you. Thank you so much. The infamous <clears throat> Kim B. Miller. Um, thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, my name is Dawn Horizons, uh, healer, massage therapist, uh, poet. My poet name is Essence. Um, we can get into the to the essence of life. I'm writing a piece on that. Um, but in light of uh, Black History Month and just wanting to encourage others, um, I'm going to share a piece called Black Boy, Black Man. Okay. In this day and age, in this day and age when men are, are black, I'm sorry, in this day and age when black men are used as target practice and the prey of white men hunters, I want you to know that you matter and that there is a king in you. I want you to know that we, true black women, we value and appreciate you. Black boy, black man, you are a prince. You come from royalty, black man, brown man, White women want you for your strength and physique. White men are scared of you for your strength and physique. Black women desire you for your strength and physique. Keep being you, you are simply unique. Know that you are created by design from the father of above. In fact, you are created in God's image and likeness and love. There is no one like you because you are created from his love. You are criticized and ostracized simply for the color of your skin, and your sexy melanin, yet you are bold from within. Courage, endurance, and stamina run through your veins. That's why they want to hurt you and lay you in a white chalk stain. Black man, brown man, you are inventor, innovator, creator, originator, that's just your nature. Black man, brown man, you are intelligent and smart. Your body, your strength, even your mind is a work of art. Black boy, Brown boy, you were destined from before the womb. Your energy, strength, and wit need to be lovingly groomed. Black boy, brown boy, you were born with destiny. You are a predestined prince from the king of kings. Your protection and safety exudes under the shadow of his wings. People will talk about you and will try to pull you down, but only because they're afraid of the day when you recognize that you are valuable and worthy a man that was destined to be crowned. Black man, brown man, we appreciate you and we value you. Say so, uh, I, I wrote that in the need of so many things that were going on in, in news and media and just felt that our men really needed to be encouraged 
and not all women think that men are dogs. <laughs> and so they need to be encouraged um, and be strengthened so that they can stand up and be the men that God created them to be. Um, this is a new piece that uh, touches my heart. It's called, I'm sorry. Um, it's, it's pretty new. <laughs> so here we go. To all the families that have loved and lost a black man to police violence, I'm sorry. I feel you and I see you. I pray for you. I'm sorry that this country was founded and raised on the black skin with its melanin as being inferior to the white skin. And that this unwarranted racism still runs vibrantly through this country and every system of this country, especially the so-called justice system. Black lives matter. And every time one is tattered with blue bullets, it stings and it hurts. Not only the moms and the family as they go six feet under the earth, but all of us with melanated skin because we family, we all are kin. I would hashtag say their names, but there's so many, we could literally be here all day and night. So instead I'll just a few highlight. A Tatiana Jefferson, Tanisha Anderson, Brianna Taylor, Philando Castile, Andre Hill, Tamir Rice, Mike Brown, Rodney King. Can't we all just get along? Eric Garner, Amadou Diallo, Xavier Hill, Fredericks Cox, George Floyd, I can't breathe. Joshua Feast, Casey Goodson, Hannah Williams, India Kager, Algeria Woods, Geraldine Townsend, and all the many men and women shot in the back, in their home or sprayed and just because they were black. Remember Sandra Bland, the woman who never made it to her job interview because of a busted taillight? She complied, was arrested, went to jail and still lost her life. Never made it to an arraignment, never stood before a judge because she was judged simply because her skin was smudged. Sandra Bland especially touched me as I'm a strong black woman driving in the neighborhood. I ain't up to no good, but neither was Bland. And she didn't even have a knife or a gun in her hand. This story hit home for me and caused me to fear when I was out driving, driving alone, traveling here or there. It happened to her, it could happen to me. Just driving and living life with a busted taillight. They beat her. They beat her and killed her and let her die, then blamed her and lied and said it was suicide. America the land of the brave, the home of the free, my country tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, but not for me, we ain't, we not free. It's just a different type of slavery. They let us have our own house now and work on our own field now. They let us drive ourselves around in our own car now. They allow us to think and feel like we made it. We can move virtually, voluntarily into their neighborhood, but we will never fit in. Never be assimilated, never be one of them, never be just like them, never be equal to them, never be free because of their insecurities and slave mentality. Being black is like being the target for their practice. Black women and men are killed for simply being black, walking while black, bicycling while black, jogging while black, reading while black, sleeping while black, parked while black, breaking up a fight while black, helping people in the mall while black, shopping while black, standing outside while black, standing in your own home while black, standing in a Walmart while black. I'm sorry. It's not what you do actually, it's simply your blackness that offends them. It's your beautiful blackness that worries them. It's your strength, it's your courage, it's your physique, it's your smile. It's your being black that offends them because deep down they're feeling less than because everything they've ever achieved, it's been on the blacks, on the backs of a black man and black woman from every invention and witty idea to having children and raising them. It's the black skin for them. Any shade of blackness to them is intimidating and a reason to have them contemplating your demise because whether from slave ships to auction blocks and from the field to the master's house, they're contemplating your demise. I'm sorry, continue to be strong, continue to shine bright regardless. Your blackness is the sun that shines over us all. Thank you. Wow. Wow. Thank you. It's, you know, listening to all the instances and obviously you couldn't put them all in there because we'd be here for a week, which is even sadder, which is even sadder. But um, yeah, it's important for those of you like, well, that's a, that's a hard home. 
is not hard for us because we talk about, poets talk about the difficult subjects because that's how a lot of us learn about different things. That's how a lot of us focus on the unfocusable. <laughs> yes, poets will make words up. So you just, just swallow that, okay? Um, <laughs> that's how we do it. And that's how we make it bite-sized for you. That's how we do it. So that's that was beautiful. Thank you, Dawn, thank you. That was beautiful. So I am going to read a poem. And this one is from my book called My Poetry is a Beauty Overlook. And this one is called Black Crayon. I wonder if the black crayon knows how it's pronounced in Spanish and treated in English. I wonder if the black crayon knows it was never meant to be colored with, only used. If it was discarded, it would be blamed for being unuseful. I wonder if the black crayon knows it is hated. I wonder if it knows it must stay in the corner of the box, segregated from the better colors. This is too dark. Pigmentation challenge, treated like a leper, looked at for problems, but not solution, roasted like charcoal and blamed for the fire. I wonder if the black crayon knows if it broke, it would be blamed for being broken while pretending to be whole. It will not scream. It will stand quietly, still. Hoping its color is not the cause of its own destruction. I wonder if the black crayon knows if it could not color anymore, it would still be called colored or lack with a B in front of it, black. If it was chosen, it would be drawing something ugly watching his color being secured to anger, begging for a chance to draw beauty. Black crayons regret your misconceptions. When one black crayon draws outside the line, all crayons are answerable. Maybe they can look softer. Maybe their hardness is a protective coating. A black crayon could draw or write in several languages and be ignored in all of them. Crayons grieve. I wonder how often black crayons cry. Can they hear their own, their own teardrops or is solitude louder than pain? Will they draw black tears or just call them periods? Aren't sentences syllabized weapons that end with a black dot? I wonder if black crayons ever compare war stories with black pens. I wonder if a black crayon could draw his own agony with no paper willing to accept the weight of his thoughts. What are black crayons supposed to draw? Should they lightly sketch how loneliness permeates inside the crowded box? This box is so small. Black crayons smell freedom each time the lid is open. They are taught discipline. They know their place. They draw whole in pieces. They draw life and defy death. They bleed inside that box. Even when selected, the black crayon knows it's only temporary air. After all, boxes are not made to be empty. So this was Black History Month, Prince William County Poets, and I hope you enjoyed it. Poetry Escaped. I cannot thank these five dynamos, uh, powerhouses. Uh, I I'm running out of names, really. <laughs> I can't thank all this greatness enough because this would be nothing without the five of you. This is exactly what I envisioned. I am honored, you are honored, I'm honored that you all came. Thank all of you who tuned in. And this is your Prince William County Poet Laureate. And I'll see you the next third Sunday at 4 p.m. for Women's History Month. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, Kim, love you. Love you, thank, thank you. you for having me. <laughs> thank you, Kim. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you as well. Thank you all. Thank Have you. Have a great day. It was Thank awesome. you so much, Kim. Thank, Thank you. you.